Hey friends, welcome to the channel. If you want to learn to speak in a foreign language but you're afraid to do it, you've found the right video. Let's get My name is Dustin. I'm an IT project manager from Germany. On this channel, we create content that helps us to be productive, to learn new things, especially languages, and to live a happier and more fulfilling life. Today, we'll review another language learning app called Lingolette or Lingolet, I'm not completely sure which uses AI to help you practice your speaking skills in one of over 20 languages and counting. For that you get interesting material to read first and then have a discussion about it to practice your comprehension, speaking and if you want also your writing skills. All right, let's dive into today's, uh, wait, first a nice sip of coffee. <sighs> Los geht's. Lingolette or Lingolette gets developed by a small company with the same name based in Estonia. Fun fact, many learning apps are being developed in Estonia. The reason for that is that the country has been a hub for technology for many years with an almost fully digital administration and many tech companies. Further, the country's education system is top-notch and Estonia is, according to the PISA study, always among the top performing countries and it's even the best in Europe. Now, let's come to the problem the app addresses and tries to solve. When we want to learn to speak in a foreign language, it can be super terrifying to get started. It's basically the fear of what other people will think of us when we can't articulate ourselves properly. And that's holding us back. This should get solved by using AI technology to interact with us instead of a real human. But using AI has also other advantages, but more on that later. So now let's have a look at the app together. So this is how it looks like when you log into it, but we'll first have a look at the profile settings. They can choose um, which teacher you want to have, depending on the language you're learning. So I'm currently learning Spanish. That means I can choose between a, yeah, a teacher that has a Spanish accent and a teacher that has a Mexican accent. That's super useful. Other than that, you can also influence how fast the teacher speaks. You can choose between normal, slow and very slow. And it's take normal. You can also choose how you want to get the feedback. If you want to have it as a separate note, note sorry, or if you want to have it directly in its speech. Um, if you have it in its speech, then uh, the AI is even talking more. So I would say separate note. You can put in your name, you can put in your native language. That will also um, yeah, lead to the AI explaining sometimes stuff in your native language or um, driving conclusion, conclusions from that. And here you can choose the, the language you would want to learn. There are quite a few, as you can see here. I won't go through the complete list. You can do that by yourself, but yeah, there's quite a lot. And then you can also choose the level you are at. Um, yeah, I have chosen B1 because I haven't spoken much yet, but my comprehension is quite good. And that's it. Then you can save and then we can actually start. Okay, in the next step, we'll have a look at the sources. That means those are the different topics that you will get articles about that you can then read through and work through with the AI. And as you can see, there's science, EU news, technology, fake orama, lifestyle and health. And there could be more in the future, I suppose. And right now, as you can see, it's very EU-centric also with the EU news. It would be cool to also have, I don't know, US news or Asian news or whatever. Okay, and then we go to the reading section and there we can choose an article that we wanna read and then talk about with the AI. So let's have a look. What can we read? Probably one that I have read already. Uh, let's take this one. So it's Resiliencia Comunitaria Ante la Tragedia. La Respuesta de Southport a la Violencia. And this is the article. You can see uh, an artwork, a picture that should fit in theory to the topic, but often it's really random and really, really doesn't fit and is mixing up stuff. 
And that happens usually if you give AI uh, too much uh, room for interpretation. And then you get something like that here. Um, and this is probably even yeah, a better one. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's, it's a mess. And then you can read the text. And it's here like, Un joven de 27 años ha sido acusado de asesinato en Inglaterra. And so on. And you can also click on specific words if you don't understand them. Like for example, acusado, angeklagter, okay. And then you can also add it to the dictionary. It's someone who is accused of something. And you can also listen to it. So the, here's a play button. Un joven de 17 años ha sido acusado de asesinato en Inglaterra. El ataque con cuchillo dejó tres niñas muertas y varios heridos graves. And this way it also scales pretty well because it gets read out aloud also by an AI. So that's also the reason that such a small team of developers can have that many languages in one app. Okay, then you read it. Next, you have questions down here that you can answer. And you can answer them either in written form or in the spoken form. For example, ¿Cuántas niñas murieron en el ataque? That means how many children or girls died during the attack. And you can see... Mm -hmm, three. So, tres. Ninjas. So we can also answer that it works like this. Oh, sorry, that's different. Oh, okay, you just need to click here and hold. Tres ninjas. Let me send it. Normally it also turns green on top or red if you have answered it wrong. Uh, I've already answered it before, so it doesn't change the color anymore. And then you can also answer the different, the other two two questions. Sorry, there are always three questions about the text, and then you can click on discuss with AI, and that that's what we're gonna do now. Hola, recientemente vi que leíste un nuevo artículo. De qué se trataba en resumen? And then you can come up with an answer. The nice thing is you have as much time as you need and you can really, yeah, take your time as mentioned. Okay, let's see. Um, so you click here, then you can hold your space key. And as long as you hold it down, you can speak, but maximum of 30 seconds. So let's go. Um, El texto trata de la agresión de un adolescente de 17 años que atacó a unos niños con un cuchillo durante una clase de yoga y danza. Um, murieron tres niñas y muchas han resultado heridas. Sí, es una noticia muy trágica. Es terrible cuando ocurren estos actos de violencia, especialmente cuando afectan a niños. El artículo menciona que el joven de 17 años ha sido acusado de asesinato en Inglaterra. Es un caso muy grave. ¿Recuerdas cuántos cargos enfrenta el acusado según el artículo? Ok, now we need to answer again. ¿Recuerdas cuántos cargos enfrenta el acusado? Uh, I'm not sure. I think multiple cases of, uh, and then you can, uh, I mean, if you don't know for sure, you can also just answer, you don't know. Uh, no soy seguro, um, seguro, no me recuerdo. No te preocupes, es normal no recordar todos los detalles. Según el artículo, el acusado enfrenta tres cargos de asesinato y diez de intento de asesinato. Es una situación muy seria. El texto también menciona que el incidente ocurrió durante una clase específica. ¿Recuerdas qué tipo de clase era? Yeah, and then you can also see my last response was wrong. It isn't no soy seguro. 
but it's not as toy seguro. And then you get, yeah, as mentioned, you get um, corrections right next to the bubble. Yeah, and this way you go back and forth with the AI and work through the um, through the text. What's also useful is to have the text in a different tab that you can uh, look things up. Okay, next there's also a section for words. So whenever you use a word or a word gets used in the conversation in general, it also shows up here. And you see the different categories, if it's a noun, if it's a verb, if it's, uh, what else? If it's an adjective or adverb, and you can also mark it to learn it intensively. And the AI will then focus specifically, specifically on that word that you have marked. You can also see the proficiency um, that grows when you use the word several times throughout multiple conversations and the bar gets higher as far as I've understood. And the nice thing is that you don't only have the word, but you also have the word in context. So in the context in that it has been used, in the conversation or to be more precise how you have used it in the conversation and that's super useful and you can also switch between languages so if you want to learn multiple languages using um, using lingolette or lingolet you can also do that and switch back and forth here so first let's come to the pros we are completely flexible and don't have to adapt to a specific schedule but can learn whenever we have time to do it and also for how long we want we can do it all from home even if we don't have the opportunity to visit a country where the language gets spoken there's always a transcription of our chats and vocabulary gets gathered in our personal dictionary including the context in which it has been used as well as the frequency in which we use certain words that gives us the possibility to analyze our speech and actively improve it Further, you can also use the built-in flashcard feature to review them if you want. It's of course also cheaper than doing classes or having even an individual teacher. As mentioned in the intro, you can overcome the fear of speaking and have then an easier time when you actually start to speak to a real human at some point. It supports also a wide range of languages. Currently 16 are fully implemented and there are already multiple new ones being tested right now. For full list, have a look at the website. It's also not about boring grammar study, but interacting with meaningful content. And the AI also adapts to your answers and your skill level, as well as giving you explanations about the errors you make and how to improve them. Now let's come to the cons. The flexibility can also be a weakness. If we have planned a fixed time for a lesson with a tutor, it's harder to bail out or to find an excuse not to do it. Someone holds you accountable. An AI can solve that. You don't get to know new and interesting people when you just talk to an AI. But you can of course also combine the two or just use Lingoletta to get going and then later pivot to talking to a real human. AI generated pictures for the text often really doesn't fit at all. So maybe it would have been better to use stock pictures, but yeah, like it is right now, it's really not pleasant. The corrections in the free version are not precise, but the paid version is kind of good. You can't import your own text. And so far there isn't a smartphone or tablet app. You can only use it in the browser. More statistics would also be nice, like minutes spoken or words read or so. There's also no possibility to export words to an app like Anki to practice them using flashcards and to aggregate all your vocabulary in one place. There are also still some bugs, especially when it comes to reading stuff out aloud when there are numbered responses. So it feels a bit clunky. After you have talked about a specific article for a while, the AI will also start to ask basically the same questions over again instead of branching out to explore other details. When it comes to pricing, the yearly subscription costs about $7.50 per month, which is then about $90 per month. And the regular monthly plan costs about $14 per month. There's also a free plan, but it's fairly limited and the responses you get from the AI, especially when it comes to your errors, are not that useful. So if you really want to try it, I would suggest to just buy a monthly subscription and see if it works for you. Compared to lessons with real humans, it's of course way cheaper. Okay, in conclusion, Lingoletto or Lingolet 
can be a great tool to start working on achieving a basic spoken fluency if you have already a good comprehension of the language to start with but i wouldn't rely on it completely at some point you definitely should also start to talk to real humans also it still has a few bugs and a few features are still missing that should be added as mentioned earlier so don't expect a perfect app yet but there's lots of potential if they keep improving it if you have already for example ChatGPT plus then i wouldn't get lingolet at the current point in time and with ChatGPT Plus or something similar, you can do more things also outside of the language learning realm. I haven't tried other AIs that were designed specifically for language learning yet, but I will do it in the future. And then I should also be able to draw better comparisons. And if you in general feel a bit lost and would like to know how to learn a language from scratch, make also sure to watch this video here. Thank you so much for watching and see you the next time.